up in a military family, which means uh, we moved about seven times by the time I was entering junior high. We ended up in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. My dad was in the Air Force, and uh, he'd started out as a drill sergeant, and uh, at the t by the time we got to Wyoming, he was a uh, staff sergeant in the military police. Um, his older brother, George, was a fighter pilot in the Navy, and his younger brother, Billy, was in the construction battalion of the Navy, uh, building forward operating bases for special forces in Vietnam. So we were a military family, and uh, I had a high and tight uh, crew cut every other weekend until I was 10 years old in the backyard. And uh, so it was the early summer of 1973. Um, nobody had heard from uh, Uncle Billy for about, well, a couple of years. He did two tours in Nam and uh, got shot up pretty bad in one of his escapades. And they discharged him, and he landed in California with a bunch of uncashed uh, checks. And then uh, nobody had heard from him for a long time. And one uh, afternoon, I think it was a Friday, he showed up uh, on his Harley, wearing a leather vest and as tan and filthy as a, just a piece of roadkill. Um, <laughs> saddlebags on his bike and uh, leather pants and boots and just scary and he came in and called my dad Eddie which nobody did I was Eddie but uh, he called my dad Eddie and said he was here and glad to see everybody and my mom looked at my dad like he's not spending the night and uh, my dad took her aside and said this my brother he's gonna spend the night so Billy says uh, to me and my younger brother uh, we're going shopping, and he goes, Eddie, put on the barbecue. I'm going to get all the food. And he called me Squirt, and uh, my brother was Pipsqueak. So he tells us to get our bikes, and we're going to, he doesn't know where the store is. So we've got to guide him to the store. So there I am on my Stingray with the banana seat and the sissy bar. Uncle Billy in the middle on his Harley, and my other brother on the other side. If you've ever seen Easy Rider, that's nothing compared to me and my brother riding with Uncle Billy to the Safeway. We get in, we park out front, and we're just like, oh my God. It was so loud, and he was so bad looking, and we walk into the Safeway, and he's like this. Way. Get the corn on the cob. I'm gonna be over here in the meat section. Yeah. Okay. We get the corn on the cob. You know, my brother gets the Neapolitan ice cream in the rectangular container. And we go, we look at Billy, and he's stuffing filet mignons down his pants. Enough for the whole family. Then he takes a case of Budweiser and we meet him on the line. And we're like, oh my god, Billy stole! Because remember, my father's a military police, so he told us, if I ever even think you're going to steal something, I'll break your arms and your legs. And here we are. What are we going to tell Dad? We have no idea. We ride home. Dad fires up the barbecue. Everybody eats. We're great. That night, me and my brother laying in bed, we're like, what are we going to tell Dad? Okay, it didn't happen. All right, we just it didn't happen. Just forget it. Oh, Uncle Billy's just you know he's off on this one. We're not going to squeal. So we wake up in the morning, my dad's watching the Green Bay Packers on TV, Billy's sitting on the back porch with his case of beer, drinking, chain smoking, filterless camels, puts each beer back in place, picks it up, and we're looking at him, and he's got scars like you just can't believe. He's got tattooed maps, he's got a naked lady tattooed on him, he's got a, a bee with a machine gun which is from his unit. Um, he's got guys' names that only on the left side because he tattooed them himself. Um, and we're just looking at him, and he's just there smoking, drinking. And me and my brother are playing Army. Now, most of the kids in Wyoming played Cowboys and Indians. We played Army. And because of my dad's job, we had real guns that had been plugged so they wouldn't fire. We had real helmets, we had web belts, canteens, we had everything. If these days, if we were doing that, somebody call in a SWAT team for Al-Qaeda, you know, because it, everything was authentic. 
So I'm up on the roof of the shed, laying in ambush. My brother is supposed to come around, comes around behind, surprises me, and starts going, bang, bang, you're dead, you're dead. I scramble over the roof. I'm like, I'm the older brother. I'm not dead. All right? I'm shooting back at him. He, of course, is out in the yard, out of, just completely out of cover. And I'm, I'm like, you're dead. He's like, no, you're dead. I surprise you. You're, I'm like, dude, I'm two years older than you. You're dead. He then says, Uncle Billy, Eddie's dead. And he goes, you're dead. He's dead. Let me show you what dead is. He gets up, and we're like, he goes, come here, come here, you guys want to play war? I'm like, maybe we'll learn something. Take the helmets off, put the guns down. He goes over, all of a sudden a big knife comes out from behind. Cuts the clothesline, pull down. Cuts the, the line. Trusses me up in about two seconds. My brother starts to run, he snags him. He ties him up. We're both hog-tied, hanging. He's tied us so tightly, our breastbones are about to break. If we wiggle, we choke ourselves. He hangs my brother on one clothesline pole, and me on the other one. And he goes in, and he goes, Eddie, I'm teaching the kids about war. My dad's in having a beer, he's like, what's going on? He comes running out, he looks, he starts to laugh. Now, they both come down. They're looking at us. At this point, the ropes have cut into our wrists so badly. We've got burns around our neck. They cut us down. We go in. My mom's looking at us. We have giant rope burns around our neck. Purple marks. Uncle Billy had to leave that night. And I didn't see him again for many years. But the, the, last, the next time I saw him, I just got out of college, and he'd just gotten out of Attica. And he said, I don't think your dad ever told you how proud we both were that day that neither of you cried. <laughs>